It never gets old, does it? Never does. <laughs> You should at least pretend it gets old it sometimes. It doesn't get old. It doesn't I'm get not going to pretend. You walk into a pizza parlor and everybody they does all that. They stand up. <laughs> I've never eaten a pizza in my life. You never had a pizza? Never had we a gotta pizza. we got to get you a pizza. Big news. Yeah, would you stop making noise over there? He just hit his tambourine. Anyway, good rock in the night. Was not great. Anything. They did a good job, didn't they? They're a great band. You're lucky. Well, I think they're lucky well, you to would. work with a man of my talent and ability. Okay, that was embarrassing. Uh, first of all, uh, I, we've talked before. You oh, know yes. that I'm one of those people that knows more about you than you know about you. I do. Yeah. It's, I'm one of those people that has the, the books and the bootlegs and the rare bootleg unreleased of you guys tuning your instruments and <laughs> sleeping and making chili. <laughs> and you, you must... It must be kind of weird to meet people like me because it's like you just lived your life and you exactly. did these great things, but it's just your life. Yes, but I have to rely on people like you now. Why is that? I have no memory. Oh, you, <laughs> you forgot everything. Tell me everything. So I can know. tell you that on March 5th, 1968, you, you yes. had an amazing bagel. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, there, there really is. I mean, for example, there are these, uh, I think there's one, isn't it this week, Frank, that yeah. there's, a, there's one of these uh, Beatles conventions where all the people come together and it borders on craziness. Yeah. I haven't gone to those, but it borders on craziness where they have soap that's of your head and they're yeah. praying to it. I mean, well, let me tell you, I've never been to one either. You've never gone to a Beatles no, convention? No, but uh, a lot of people who do go say they have a good time. Oh, that's good. Uh, the only problem I have with it, that mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff they're selling is sort of stuff from now. Mm -hmm. and it's not, not like the then. old stuff, yeah. right. It's like they make a guitar and... They or, do. Right, or they say, this is an actual, you and know... And they make my head out of soap. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did that. Ah. Uh, I'm curious, you have been super, super famous now for, uh, for over 40 years. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, I think about... I've been famous longer than you've been on this planet. It's true. That's actually a true statement. you're 35 now, right? I'm 28, ah. actually. <laughs> but you're very close. Yeah. And I'm getting to tomorrow. Next year, I'll be, t I'll be 25 next yeah, year. Good. You're I'm looking forward down. to that. No, uh, you, uh, and you think about it, I was thinking, you, can you even remember when you weren't Ringo Starr, when you were just Richard Starkey, normal guy walking around? <laughs> Do you remember being Richard Starkey, a normal fella? I'm, I'm thinking. You're thinking. <laughs> you always nod your head like that yeah, when you I think? Yeah, I do when I'm thinking, Because yeah. that's a real problem. You I should know. look... <laughs> hey, don't point out my problem. <laughs> okay. Let's talk uh, about my I problems. Don't anyway. Yeah. Uh, it was you... a long time ago, and of right. course, my family, you know, my children don't say, hey, Ringo, do you want a cup of tea? Right. They uh, say, hi, Dad, and darling. I called you darling earlier, and you didn't like it. I wasn't going to mention it. Um, <laughs> it was very nice of you. You're, you once said to your mother, I read this in an interview, you once said to your mother, all people over the age of 60 should be shot. Yes, I used to think as a teenager, anyone at 60 should be shot. They were just taking up space on the planet. Right. So I'm just curious, how old are you now? Time to be shot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not have that. Let's not have that. But anyway, the other line, my mother, when I was 40, my mother, who remembered everything, uh, as mothers do, mm -hmm. said, uh, when I was 40, she said, happy birthday, son. I don't suppose you still think like you used to about 60-year-olds. I said, no, not anymore, Mom. It was funny at the time. <laughs> How yeah. do we have proof? You have to be <laughs> We there. can look it up in a book. Uh, yeah. What do you think of these days, there's this phenomenon where pop stars don't come up the way the Beatles came up, sure. where it was a very organic experience. There are pop groups that are put together uh, and they're sort of packaged. Uh, there are shows like American Idol, which sure. began in England and yeah. has come over here and become a big success. Are you comfortable with that phenomenon? I, do don't, you think I don't take much of an interest in it. I mean, yeah. I, I come from, as you said, I come from, first of all, getting your instrument then playing with friends, playing in clubs, playing in theaters, playing in our case, stadiums. Right. Um, where, you know, I play for the joy of playing. Mm -hmm. My dream was to play drums, which I do, mm -hmm. and to play with good players. 
and then playing with great players, which I still am. So, you know, my dreams are still coming true and I'm still playing, so that's good. The ones they put together, I, I don't understand it really because you put like five strangers in a room, you tell them what to sing, uh, some producer will take a line from that one, a line from this one. Right. They'll go on stage pretending they had something to do with this. Right. And then the minute it's not working, they just get dumped. Right. <laughs> They also do a strange thing, which is they tell people what their personality is. Yeah. You're the tough one, yeah. you're the cuddly yeah, yeah, yeah. one, whereas, I Conan's mean... Conan's the tall one. Yeah. I was gonna go for uh, sexy, but oh, you yeah. went for tall. <laughs> tall and sexy. Thank you. Uh, that'll be... <laughs> I like it when you say it. Uh, sexy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people just I'll tuning in. There. Oh, there we are. Sexy. Hi. <laughs> wow. Uh, but it's funny because one of the th things that was so great about the experience you went through was that it was all organic and real. Everyone had their own uh, identity and yeah. that came through. And today I think they would be saying, okay, John, we're gonna make you this one and we're yeah. gonna make Paul this yeah, one and yeah. Ringo that one. And it seems like a very if odd way. If they ever do that, I'd like them to make me taller. <laughs> I have a lot of pull with these people. I I'll know, see what I can, I can do. Tell. Um, don't be sarcastic. Now, hey. <laughs> now you're playing a song tonight for us, which is called "Never Without You." Yes. This is a tribute to George Harrison. Exactly. Um, first of all, my condolences that that this isn't yeah. is necessary sure. to do. Well, you know the song. You know George has gone, physically, but spiritually, he's still with us through his friendship with me mm -hmm. and his music. So the song is about that. He's still, he's still with us anyway. Right, you know? right. And this is, uh, that's gotta be a powerful thing to perform it for is. people. It is, I mean, you know, though we've been on this role now promoting the record Ringo Rama and mainly playing this song, um, it's still an emotional moment, especially when I've put in uh, in the song, words that George had written, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from Never... Um, I'm having a moment. <laughs> you don't even know who I With, am right no, now, do you? No, no. You're, <laughs> yes, I do. Hold on, yes, hold I do, on. Ted it's Koppel. Coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> uh, within you, without you, in, well, know, which uh, is yes, some of his right, lines we right. put in the song, so uh, all things must pass. Right. And so, you know, it was... For me, it was a nice way to say, you know, I know, you know, I knew George loved me, I love George, and mm -hmm. this is a song for him. What's also nice is that you got uh, Clapton to play on it. Eric was, was also... the only guitarist I would have on this track because uh, they, George and Eric had a great relationship, right. and Eric and I, and George and I, so I wanted him to play on the record, and we called him up, and he said, okay. What was nice is there was this amazing uh, tribute at the was it at the Royal Albert Hall, Royal Albert Hall for yeah. for George and I think this is just a few months ago. It was last November the 29th. Yeah, and it was uh, I I didn't wasn't able to go, but everyone told me that it had the spirit of a party, which was probably what he would have wanted something. Yeah. Well, and was, all these great musicians who knew and loved him coming together and playing well, his music. Well, that's that's the point. Uh, everybody on stage knew George. He knew them. It wasn't like we're doing a charity. Let's call Conan. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I waited by the phone, Ringo. Yeah, but you know what I, I mean. I sat by that oh, phone for hours waiting. And the call never came no. through. I play a mean maracas. But you know what I mean. It was old people that loved him. He loved them. He yeah. knew them. So it was great that we all played together. Was right. great. And then we all hung out together. Was great. We all had our George stories and our moments. Sure. So it was really a cool thing to do. Well, it, we're thrilled that you're, you're here. We're also thrilled that you're gonna play uh, this song for you. It's just, it's a real joy for me when you come on the program. Oh. And it's really, I'm, I'm also really happy that you're out there and you're making good music and sure. you're doing your thing. And don't forget, this summer I'm on tour. He's on tour and he's also got an album, Ringo Rama, which is out there. Ringo Starr, he'll be back at the end of the show. We'll be right back with Eddie Izzard.